I have another stove comparison video for you. This time the classic IKEA hobo stove versus the little bug inspired wood stove. If you're interested, keep watching. So this is a viewer requested video, this one and a few others to see what different stoves compared. So I thought I'd try to accommodate that. So let's talk about the test itself. So we're going to break the test down into two sides or two components. The first one will be about the stoves themselves. We want to look at things like their cost their weight, their bulk, especially when they're in their collapsed form and you store them in your bag. We want to talk about the ease of assembly and the ease of use. And we'll look at some other factors as well. Then we'll get over to the performance of the two stoves. So like the other tests, I am going to be using the same amount of hardwood, uh, kiln dry and hardwood, in each of the stoves. It'll be a little different in this because the stoves have a little bit of a different size, but I'll be using the same amount of hardwood. What I want to see is how quickly those stoves come to a point where I can put a pot of water on them and then we're going to see how long it takes to boil two cups of water. We'll do a comparison that way and finally we'll see how long the fuel lasts in the stoves and there may be some other factors we want to consider there as well. All right let's set the test up. Okay let's get started with the stove comparison. So I have both stoves loaded with pots in stuff sacks. I thought that was the best way to start the comparison. It will change of course according to what you're going to use for a pot because of course these stoves don't come with a pot and they're not designed for any specific pot but I thought I'd just show you these, show, these uh, setups but I will give you the weights and uh, you can see the sizes of the stoves by themselves without the pot. So to begin let's go with the classic Ikea hobo stove. So there's the stove and the pot that I will be using today. Let's set the stove up very quickly, fold out the legs and put the cross stand on. Okay, nice quick setup for the Ikea. That's always been one of the hallmark benefits of it is uh, Depending on, of course, how you build yours out, it, they set up very quickly. And uh, that's, that certainly is one of the benefits of it. Now you can see the pot I have is something I picked up at our local thrift store, Value Village. It's a 13 centimeter pot, so it's nice in that I can set the IKEA stove down inside for our storage. So, but just go on top like that. And the reason I'm using this 13 centimeter pot, and you'll see in a minute, is because the other stove is also going to be using a 13 centimeter pot. So I needed to keep the stoves as relatively close to the same size as possible just to try to equal that variable out. So let me put that pot aside and we'll set up the other stove. Now, the other stove, again, I have a 13 centimeter pot inside of here. And I'll bring that out because I want to show you that. The stove itself fits right down inside the stuff sack wrapped around the outside of the pot. So it virtually takes up almost no room. And that is probably the single biggest benefit for this stove is the fact that it's so compact. And we'll set that up now. This does take a bit more work. I have a, in fact, I've added one other piece to it as you'll see. So, as I've shown in my other video, to set this up, all four pieces of the Luxata, or Little Bug inspired Luxata wood stove, are the same. You start by just hooking them from the top. This is the top up here, folks. Hooking them from the top, rolling them into place. You do kind of have to keep a track of, or keep, you know, keep them together in your hands until they're assembled, but that's it. So, not a lot of work. They go together very quickly and the cross stands. And today we'll use the cross stands in their raised position. So that's it. So very simple stove. Now it is a little bit bigger in diameter and I will include the exact diameters and heights for the two stoves in the show notes. But you can see they're pretty close in height when you, t when you take into consideration, see if I can do this, when you take in consideration that the Luxata, or the Little Bug inspired Luxata stove, sits right on the ground, the other one is raised, the Ikea, but height-wise, if they were both raised to the same level, they'd be pretty close. However, the Luxata is a little bit bigger in diameter, so you could get more fuel in that. I made one thing, just a very small piece of aluminum flashing, so that when I'm out in the woods and I'm on somewhat suspect ground, in other words, ground that may or may not uh, allow for a fire to get started, I can put this down 
normally I would look for either good mineral earth or put it on top of stones. In the wintertime I have put it on top of other sticks and you'll see that in the original video. So uh, that's, we're not going to be using this piece of aluminum flashing today. So sizes aside, let's talk about weights. So the IKEA Hobo stove, as I have it built out today, and I say that because the variations and the different stoves come out to different weights, but this one specifically comes in at 325 grams or 11.4 ounces. So not especially heavy, but uh, you know, quite a solid stove. The other stove, the Lexata stove comes in at 142 grams and 4.9 ounces almost a third of the weight so there is a huge weight savings between the two stoves now let's talk we talked about compactness and weight and size let's talk about cost so when it comes to cost the IKEA stove is only limited by what you want to spend on it so if you can get the the utensil strainer for 99 cents to two dollars depending if you're buying it second hand I think they're about four or five dollars new some aluminum bars for cross stand or whatever else you want to use you could use tent pegs through the holes people have suggested that I like to raise mine up off the stove and I did spend a dollar or two for each of these conduit clamps to add to the bottom. So I nominal, nominal price I like to attribute to the IKEA stove is around $5. The Little Bug inspired Luxata stove, it's not an expensive stove, actually it's quite an inexpensive stove in that it came in I think around $15 Canadian I paid for it and of course I will annotate that and provide the link where I did get mine. So there, uh, you know, there's different places on the internet you can purchase these from eBay to uh, AliExpress and the like but I'll put the link in where I got this one. So you can see that this stove comes in not expensive, but more expensive than the other one. So one of the things that is going to have to be determined by a long-term use is the durability of the Lixata stove. It is very thin, very thin metal, stainless steel, and so far has stood up very well. I've had, oh, I don't know, about a dozen fires in it, I guess, stood up very well. The IKEA, it's held up, well, it just keeps on holding up. I don't see any uh, damage or or. or uh, you know, it's not, it's not getting uh, used to the point where I can't use it at all. It's staying in very, very good shape. So those are the two stoves ready to go. Now I have two pots. Here's the other pot I didn't really get to show you. It's just a little thing that I assembled myself uh, from another pot, or I think this is probably a sugar canister or a flour canister that I picked up at Value Village and made into a pot, and that will sit on top of the Lixada stove just nicely and it's also a 13 centimeter pot so you know as close as possible I've got two pots very close to the same size. All right let's get this test set up for the burn. Okay so I've repositioned the camera so that I can try to capture what's taking place in both stoves at the same time. So let's uh, just, just talk for a minute about the wood that I've placed in. So all these sticks are kiln dried hardwood cut to the same length, about the same thickness, and they've been weighed out so you see the same amount of wood in both stoves. Now you can see right away the difference when loading the stoves like this, and I have them all vertically stacked, is that there is more capacity within the Little Bug inspired Luxata stove than there is within the IKEA hobo stove and uh, you know that's been a comment or, or a point of discussion for people in the show notes of the other videos is that I am not showing each of the stoves in their to their full capacity or to their their full potential and yes they're absolutely correct I'm not it's just a, an attempt to control the variable it's not a, a matter of trying to say which stove perform, performs best overall it's trying to show which stove performs how they perform against each other using somewhat the same variables that I can control here in my backyard uh, in truth, I would pro I could easily load a lot more wood in the Little Bug Inspired Luxata stove and it would burn longer. In fact, I could also have put the, the wood in horizontally and lit it either from the top or the bottom and got a different burn rate there. But this is just to point out that there is, uh, you know, trying to control some variables is the best way to show it. This is not a scientific test. It was never intended to be, you know, an absolute in terms of which one is the better stove. That that's a decision you'll have to make based on what you're looking for for your needs. If it's lightweight, compactness, cost, performance, all those factors, this just is intended to help you a little bit. So I'm using commercial made fire starters, very inexpensive stuff. I'm going to be going for, it's not a top down burn, it's more like a 
uh, Swedish fire torch or Canadian candle type burn and that I'll be dropping each of these fire starters down the center of the stacks of wood so they're going to burn in a Swedish fire torch type manner. I'll start by lighting the IKEA I think I might be better luck trying to light it down. Alright, that's lit now. Drop that down inside. It will take a few minutes for the wood to get started like this. That's true of any IKEA type or any uh, fire, Swedish fire torch type burn. This it does take a minute for the wood to get engaged. So I'll get them started best I can anyway. And uh, we'll go from there, see what happens. And then, I'll bring it back, we'll put the water on, start the timer. Okay, the stoves have been going for, let me check, eight minutes now. Uh, the IKEA got engaged much quicker, and it's going through its fuel much quicker than the Little Bug inspired uh, wood stove. I think the reason being is, is I had a pretty much a perfect uh, vertical alignment of the sticks in the IKEA, but not in the... the uh, uh, little bug stove. So a lot of them were angled and they're crisscrossed over each other. I think it will make for a longer burn in the IKEA or in the little bug. We will know shortly, well we'll know by the end of this test. Uh, you know that's one of the things that's really hard to do with these tests when you have stoves of different sizes and you're using the same amount of wood is how the you know it's going to engage but this is slowing the burn down which well we'll see in a minute if it's going to actually uh, affect performance. So let's get them on and start it. So in each of these pots I have two cups of water. I'm going to give the one second advantage to the Little Bug Inspired Stove. Let's get the other one on. That is hot. And start. Alright, so the, my experience has been, especially with the IKEA, is that three to four minutes and I'm going to have boiling water. So I won't be long before I bring it back and we, uh, we'll see how long it actually did take. Man, I gotta tell you, you have to watch these stoves because that came to a boil. I was just caught it in time, I think, at 3 minutes 30 seconds for the IKEA. And let's see where the other one is at. Bubbles, but no, certainly not close to a rolling boil yet. It is really the stove, I think, is that's just getting started. So let's remove the pot from the IKEA. And you can see how far along we are with the burn. You can see there's still quite a bit more wood left to go in the Luxada stove. I think I better move my camera back away from the heat. These things are pumping out some heat. All right, when the other one comes to a boil, I'll bring it back. All right, the Luxada stove finally caught up to the IKEA for the bubbling time at 5 minutes 20 seconds. 5 minutes 20 seconds, we have a hard rolling boil in the pot that's on top of the Little Bug inspired IKEA stove. Now let me take that off, and from here we can watch the consumption of the fuel and when it gets down to pretty much nothing or pretty much close to burnout that's when I'll bring it back and give you a time on how long that took. Okay I got the camera back over in position over the two stoves uh, while I was setting it up flames went out in the Little Bug inspired stove but the IKEA went flame out about three or four minutes sooner so we're talking about 30 minutes no, actually, I did measure it. It was 30 minutes in the IKEA, almost to the minute. And uh, in the IKEA little bug, about closer to 35 minutes before I had flame out. Now, as you can see, there's still a lot of heat and a lot of active coals. Hopefully, you can see that. I'm trying to see, uh, I know I'm in bright sunlight here, so I'm not getting the best image inside. But there are still a lot of active coals and what appears to be close to the same amount of wood or coals, hot coals, inside both stoves, which I kind of expected to see fewer in the Luxada stove, but uh, alright, that's why you do these tests. Uh, maybe there's more. Actually, there's more in the Luxada stove now that I look again. So, uh, not unexpected at all, but they're both flame out at 30 and 35 minutes. Respectable burn times for both of them, respectable boil times for both of them as well. So, what I'm going to do now is let these cool down to a point I can handle them, and we'll wrap this video up. Okay, here's a point I want to make about the two stoves while they're still cooling down. So, there is still live active coals in both of the stoves, getting pretty close to being burnt out, but uh, there is still heat, so I do need to wear gloves. I'm going going to move the uh, Kia Hobo stove just off to one side. I want to see if any ash fell out of it. And the answer is no. 
uh, tiniest, tiniest bits. Having said that, there is still a lot of heat. I know from experience that the stone right here would be quite hot under it. So again, if you're working in the woods and it's dry and you're on duff, make sure you have something underneath your stove just so too much heat doesn't get transferred into the duff and start it uh, glowing and potentially creating a fire after you have left. Uh, use it on a rock, put a piece of tin foil. I quite often have a piece of flashing in my kit that I'll put underneath the stove just for that purpose. Now, let's take a look at the Little Bug Inspired Wood Stove. Completely different story. All of the remaining fuel is sitting on the stone that I have here. Without question, if I was on anything that was combustible, I likely would have started a fire. So this is the one, I'd say the single biggest drawback that this stove has in terms of its versatility is that you do need to have it on some type of a fireproof surface when you go to build your fires. Now the good news here I guess is that uh, this one's going to cool down much faster but uh, you know that's that's not the whole story. In fact it does cool down faster. I know that from experience because of the very thin stainless steel is probably I'm not going to test it but it's probably almost ready to touch now. The IKEA being thicker stainless steel holds the heat a lot longer. Okay now we'll wait till these two stoves have cooled down and we'll wrap the video up. Okay, so what lessons have I learned or what conclusions can I draw in comparing the IKEA hobo stove against the Little Bug inspired uh, stove? Well, number one is a personal lesson. <laughs> Doing these stove tests on a hot day in full sunlight with two extremely hot stoves, I don't know where my wisdom was. Next test, I'm moving into the shade for this and probably better for it because I think you'll be able to get a better look at what's taking place. The fl it should be a little clear without all the sunlight blinding everything out. Okay, back to the stoves. What can I say that I've learned about them is that the IKEA continues to be a top performer, especially for its price of $5. However, having said that, the Luxata store has a whole lot of performance built into this. Now, one of the couple things we talked about in versatility and one thing we didn't mention is this might be a little bit more versatile, that is the IKEA, in that you can set it on multiple surfaces without too much concern or, you know, not, overly, not to have to be overly concerned about the heat transfer into the ground underneath. Not so with the Luxata. You have to be very concerned to make sure that you have it on a fire safe surface before you set it to, to fire, to set it to blaze. Oh, however, yeah, this is a little bit heavier, not too much heavy. This one is a featherweight, and that is a, a great benefit of having this, and very compact when it's put away. It does take a little bit more to assemble it, but not much. It's not, actually, it's probably no harder if it's, if it's hard as putting that emberlet together. Very easy to put together. All right, so I have shown in another video how you can use the IKEA with an alcohol stove, and if you want to refer back to that, uh, you'll see how that can be done without having to repeat it here. I have in other videos, I believe, showing the Little Bug inspired uh, Luxata wood stove with alcohol stoves, but for those who haven't seen that, because they were probably in longer videos, this works well as a wood screen. It doesn't work well as a stove that you can set an alcohol stove in and set it to the right pot height. What I would recommend with this stove is that you set up your alcohol stove in a little stand of its own, maybe one of those little wire ones that I've made in another video, you can set that right over top of a Trangia, and then use this as a windscreen. And I've done that multiple times, even with my titanium cookware, the pot, the little Tom Shoot pot and Tom Shoot alcohol stove. This is what I took for a couple of reasons. One, it gave me the option of using it as a wood stove instead of uh, if I either ran out of alcohol or I had a, you know, a good amount of dry wood and it was safe to use it. Um, but it just works so great as a windscreen and uh, that's that's one piece of versatility that this has over this stove. Okay, I think we've said enough about these two stoves, the IKEA Hobo stove and the Little Bug inspired Lixata stove. I will put links to in the show notes below to where you can find out more about this one if you're interested. Uh, if you have any comments on either this test or any other tests that you would like to see me conduct, comparing stoves one, one against the other, then please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.